after reinforcing the studs in the previous video and adding insulation and tar paper to the walls, I started to add new 1x3 siding. As the stud reinforcements were in different places, I had to be careful screwing the siding in. Initially I began by pressing the 1x3s up tight with each other as I measured the siding and 1x3s as being the same width. But as I noticed they were starting to misalign, I began screwing the 1x3s in line with the siding, leaving small gaps between them. These gaps in the siding would need to be filled in with caulking before I painted. gap's gonna need filled in, this gap's gonna need filled in, these gaps are gonna need filled in, and not, I kind of put it against this, so it needs filled in a little bit, but not bad, and this here, I can fill that in, fill that in, fill this in, You'll notice I'm not wearing gloves. The key to caulking is not to be afraid to get your hands in it. Caulking is a universal tool that can be used in many applications in carpentry. That is why you'll see it in many places around the house if you look for it. I'm using it to weatherproof and bug proof the siding I just installed. I'm also using it to cover all screw holes and screws even if they're flush with the wood. The reason I'm doing this is it's called painter's caulk for a reason. Caulking the screws will allow paint to adhere more effectively to their surface. It is aesthetically pleasing as well. Caulking wood will allow you to fill any gaps that would otherwise be an eyesore. I used 1x3s as my siding. You'll notice the siding already on the house is a little different. That's because it is a tongue and groove siding that measures 1x3 as well. I looked for this siding online, but as the house was built nearly a hundred years ago from scrap wood at a lumber yard was unable to find any. Luckily when painted, the 1x3s will blend in well. That is after I fill in the transition from the original siding to the 1x3s with caulking.
I used the sanding wheel on my grinder to smooth the surface of the siding after the caulking had dried. This included sanding down any protruding screw heads to become even with the wood. If you do this, be careful not to press the grinder too heavily into the wood or it will grind into the wood very easily, causing damage to your work. Don't forget to wipe off the wood before you paint. Interior slash exterior oil based satin enamel for metal, wood, doors, trim, and cabinetry. I began painting about 30 minutes after I finished applying the caulking. I thought this was long enough for it to dry, but when caulking is applied thickly, you need to give it more time than that. When painting the siding, be sure to paint the caulking as well. This is because, although it is white, the caulking is not likely to match your paint exactly. Oh man. Uh, should have waited for it to dry a little bit more. Especially when it's not pressed up against anything. After that mishap, I waited a few hours for the caulking to completely dry. I continued painting and was able to finish without complications. I miss anything? No, looks like I got it all. Cool. It used to be four and a half inches. Yeah, it's a one by five. By uh, nine and seven eighths. As I was unable to find a one by five at Home Depot, I settled on getting a one by six, which I could cut down to a one by five. I worked into the night to finish the job. So ten and three seconds. I caulked the gaps in the window trim, and after that dried, I began to paint it. Well, uh, thanks for watching, fish tools, etc. And uh, I hope you learned something, or maybe learn something not to do, but uh, I really hope you learn something because I'm doing this for people that really don't know what they're doing, and I uh, hope you watch my next video, and in the next video I'm going to finish the flooring and put tile down, and 
Hope you subscribe. Have a good night. Thank you for watching Fish Tools Etc. And have a nice day.